We were all in and an exuberant mood had taken hold of the Outlander camp, even if victory brought new labors. The dead had to be stripped of valuables and disposed of. The wounded needed treatment. Patrols on horseback had to be sent out to chase down survivors and search the area for hostile forces, ensuring the army was safe while carrying out these tasks. In his tent, Sikanda had gathered his lieutenants. They crowded around a crudely drawn map showing the location of the battle, including the lake, hills, and the land between. Various pieces, exquisitely carved in comparison, showed the placement of both Order and Outlander troops. Together, the commanders discussed the events of the battle, moving the pieces around, allowing them to learn and improve their tactics. A soldier entered quietly, standing to the side, as far away as possible from the shadow warrior in the back of the tent. At length, Sikanda's attention fell upon him. What is it? He bowed his head. Forgive me, Jenab Sikanda. You asked for any captured knight to be brought to you. I did, long ago. What is the delay? Licking his lips, the soldier spoke again with an anxious look. It seemed most of them died, or they would not reveal themselves. We did finally find one with golden spurs, as you told us. He is ready to be questioned. Bring him. With a bow and a nervous look at the shadow warrior, the soldier hurried out of the tent. I am not surprised Rostam declared. These knights fight like demons and prefer death to capture. Had your hands full in the hills. Arish smirked. Someone had to do the hard part. If our Jaden fought with the same strength. This battle would have ended on the first day Rostam claimed. Sikanda cleared his throat, sending the briefest of glances at the Shadow Warrior. If the exchange had perturbed his mood, however, no such emotion could be read in his amber eyes. The soldier returned with the captive, whose hands and legs wore chains. He had been stripped of his surcoat and armor, his woolen tunic had many marks of dried blood. I am Jenab Sikanda, the captain spoke in murk speech. Who are you? The merchant raised his head to let his defiant stare move from one outlander to the next. I am Serfian of Cairn Don, Knight of the Order of Adel. I would ask for your aid, Sikanda explained. As we are both men of rank, I see no need for matters to get unpleasant. The knight looked past the captain's shoulder to stare at the shadow warrior's face, wrapped in cloth. Ask if you seek disappointment. We already have patrols searching the area. Your knowledge would make little difference, but I will appreciate the gesture Sikanda said. I simply wish to know the location of your remaining forces in the area. I do not give aid to my enemies, regardless of threat. Perhaps you think we are unaware of the 6,000 men from the Riverlands the captain continued. Rest assured, we shall be ready when they arrive. Unexpected laughter issued from Fion, making the Outlanders exchange glances. You find this amusing? Sikanda asked. Those men are long gone. This simple attempt at deceit will not help them nor your present situation. We already have forces in the hills. Once they march down the road, we shall fall upon them from all sides. Fion smiled to himself. We warned them. We bought them time. He looked at Sikanda. Your scouts will return and tell you the same. Your victory has been made hollow. I find it hard to believe your army would stay in place, fighting a hopeless battle, unless you planned to be reinforced Sikanda considered. If not by the men of the Riverlands, then by another force. Did you hope that the garrison of the city called Inghold would avail you? Fion shook his head with a smile born of disbelief. Tell me, and I may yet be lenient. Where are your other troops? Where may we expect to be attacked? If you attempt falsehood, you will regret it. Behind the captain, the shadow warrior stepped forward with a menacing look in his eyes, a low growl came from beneath the mask and cloth around his face. Fion shrugged, raising his hands, the chains rattled in response. We were all. The tent opening flew aside, and the servant of the flame strode in. You have not been summoned Sikanda spoke harshly. I go where the god king requires me the priest responded with the same acrimony. 
All drylanders of high rank are to be sacrificed for his glory, yet I find your men refuse to yield this prisoner. Because those of high rank would be the only men possessing worthwhile knowledge the captain retorted. You may have your pick among the common soldiery. The priest's face turned the same shade as his flame-dyed robe. As if that would be fitting tribute. The God King has honored us with this victory, for only through his power did we vanquish our enemy. He must be honored in turn with the worthiest sacrifice. He already brandished a knife in his hand, aiming it at Fion. The fact we outnumbered them ten to one probably helped also Arish mumbled. You may sacrifice all the prisoners you wish Sikanda declared, except those that have value for our campaign. The priest clenched the handle of his blade until his own nails drew blood from the inside of his hand. And you believe that success hinges on your feeble actions rather than the God King's favor. I believe it is my responsibility to do all that I can to serve the God King Sikanda replied coldly. The servant of the flame glared at the shadow warrior, who did not react. He turned on his heel and left with the same angry stride that had brought him in. Keep this prisoner alone and secure Sikanda told the guard by Fion. Do not let any remove him, least of all the servant. Bowing his head, the soldier pulled on Fion's chains and led him out. Tilda, tilda 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 as usual, the black boots had gone further on their scouting trips than other outlanders. While the Anorsa patrolled the vicinity, only the Black Boots had travelled beyond the hills to enter central Adolric. They found pleasant fields in spring, growing tender stalks of grain. As for the people, some had fled hearing the rumours of battle, but most remained in their villages, hoping the tide of war would wash past them. Cameron moved nearly unseen through the landscape. He had an ordinary, grey cloak cast around him, making him appear like any merchant from afar. Should need arise, he could return the cape to his pack, leaving him clad in his dark clothes that concealed his movements at night. Walking with caution through the fields, he froze in his tracks upon hearing the strange warbling of a bird uncommon in these parts. Looking around, Cameron made the same sound, repeating the call. As the sound was exchanged back and forth, the black boot approached the other source. Moving through a thicket, he found not a bird, but Godfrey. Javed, he exclaimed. What luck to find you here. Luck. Godfrey coughed and cleared his throat repeatedly. I've been singing like a burnt crow for three days straight. My throat is killing me. He massaged the aforementioned part. Have you met any of the others? No, you're the only one. Got any water? Cameron shared the skin hanging by his waist. There was a battle. It went ill for the Drylanders. I know. Godfrey drank greedily from the skin. It was to be expected. At least the remaining troops have been able to withdraw. That explains why our search has been in vain. Jenab Sikander assumed another force was nearby. There's a barely a soldier between you and Middenhal, they've all gone north. Best you tell the good captain that you have seen tracks leading west Godfrey told the Black Boot. Let him think the forces from the Riverlands have withdrawn. I shall Cameron nodded. What else? Every hour you can buy will be valuable. The Drylanders are assembling their troops, but it will take time. How fast may the God King assault the great city? The first army will not be enough to take it. With a forced march, the second may arrive within a month Cameron speculated. Javed they claim the God King himself leads it. He is more eager for victory than I thought Godfrey speculated, to leave his stronghold already. I imagined he would only travel once the war had been won. The powers he brings with him. The Black Boot shuddered. There is a Fravashi in every part of our camp, it seems, and many more must be traveling with him. The battle will be even harder than I first anticipated the Wanderer admitted. But in his eagerness, he may show himself vulnerable. There are powers on our side as well, my friend. I hope so. Cameron exhaled. To imagine we may be the sons and daughters to see freedom. Godfrey reached to clasp the other man's arm. Till the morrow comes. Till the morrow comes.